risk of self-diagnosing allergies. Here's why it's important to stop guessing and get tested. If you've jumped online at the first sign of a runny nose or stomach pain, you aren't alone. 44% of Americans self-diagnose using the internet, and 51% of adults in the UK self-diagnose when feeling unwell or experiencing a medical symptom. Self-diagnosis is a very common process, but that doesn't mean it's a particularly good one. Some experts have even said it can be quite dangerous. One of the reasons self-diagnosis can be so risky is because it may lead to the wrong diagnosis, and not having the right diagnosis may lead some to feel their symptoms are just, well, normal, and not worth a visit to a healthcare professional. But not seeking help for certain symptoms can be especially scary when it comes to allergies. With allergies, symptoms can vary from mild to severe. In the case of anaphylaxis, a rare but serious life-threatening allergic reaction. Plus, it gets more complicated because allergies and symptoms can change over time and with age. And in many cases, it's not so easy to trace a symptom back to its cause, even with a quick online search. The reality is that allergy symptoms can share many of the same symptoms as a whole slew of other conditions, from the common cold to an intolerance, like lactose, or even a more serious condition such as celiac disease. That's why it can be so difficult to know what's going on just by self-diagnosis alone. So how can someone know for sure without risking the wrong diagnosis? Consult a healthcare provider to discuss clinical history and appropriate testing options. For allergies, there are a few testing options, including a specific IgE blood test. With a single blood draw, this test can reveal potential sensitizations to allergens. How do you get started? The first step is to complete your My Symptom Profile. This is an online interactive tool that guides a user through four simple questions to identify the symptoms they are experiencing, if these symptoms get worse at certain times, like during an illness or after eating, if these symptoms are more noticeable in certain places, like at school or outdoors, and how long these symptoms have occurred. The Symptom Profile tool will then create a summary that can easily be taken to an appointment with a healthcare provider. They'll use this information, as well as the patient's medical history, to find a testing option that's just right. The second step is to select a preferred care option and make an appointment, whether in person, online, by the phone, or directly to the lab. There are several choices for how and where to get tested. And the third, get tested. Once test results are in, a healthcare provider can interpret them along with the patient's medical history. This gets you one step closer to a management plan and relief. We get that the unknown can be scary sometimes, and while jumping online to self-diagnose may sound like an easy way to find out what's causing those pesky symptoms, getting tested is a better way to know for sure and ultimately help minimize or avoid symptoms altogether. So, what's stopping you from knowing? Fill out My Symptom Profile today and talk to your healthcare provider about getting tested. Visit www.allergyinsider.com slash get tested to learn more.